Well, hello. It's Shari, the story grandma. It's nice to see you again. Now, Pippin is very excited because he just got vaccinated, so now he can play indoors with his friends. Oh, Pippin wants to tell you not to be nervous because the shot only hurts for a second and not very much. Oh, he wants to show off his very cool band-aid. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing my magic cape, so that must mean it's story time. Today's story is called Cato Saves the Day, and Pippin helped me write it. The illustrations are by the absolutely marvelous Danny Chernoff, who also happens to know a lot about the sea and the wonderful creatures who live in it because he's a marine biologist. Maybe some of you would like to be marine biologists just like Danny and learn how all of us on the land and the sea and in the air are connected to each other. Today's story is about a couple of different things, but mostly it's about how it feels to be bullied or made fun of by your classmates or kids you know. Have you ever been teased by somebody with whom you wanted to be friends? Or maybe even joined in teasing someone else? We all know how much that can hurt. Now, Cato had to put up with some pretty mean teasing. So let's listen for a while and see how Cato felt and how he bravely put up with it. Pippin's going to sit on my lap so he can listen to the story also. <clears throat> Cato Saves the Day by Shari Ruskin, the story grandma. Cato was too excited to sleep. School was starting tomorrow. So was show and tell. He'd heard all about it from his older brother, Caleb, and he couldn't wait to tell his classmates all about his summer trip to clean a coral reef in the Caribbean. He lay in bed daydreaming, holding the sea sponge his father had given him. Cato had used it to scrub oil off the corals. He didn't quite understand how it got there in the first place, but he knew that humans had something to do with it. He also knew the corals would die if they weren't cleaned up, and it was so cool to help save them and all the fishes who lived in the reef. He smiled happily and fell asleep once he thought about all the new friends he would make tomorrow. Next morning, Cato checked his backpack for the gazillionth time, blew a bubble kiss to Mama, and swam proudly off to school all by himself. The first thing Cato noticed when he got there was that many of the other young fishes were already hanging around in small groups. The angelfish girls were all proudly sporting the same black stripe on their left fins. He thought it must be something about a water ballet. <clears throat> the damselfish girls each wore a tiny pearl on a chain. They had all been to diving school together. A group of clownfish boys were playing soccer with an empty snail shell. Cato shyly swam nearer to them. They stared at him, trying to decide whether or not to let this new kid join the game. Cato was a little uncomfortable, but he stayed. He really wanted to play. <clears throat> As they were sizing each other up, Mr. Octavio Octopus swam in. He introduced himself and told them to call him Mr. Octavio. Then he said, all right, class, 
This is the moment I know you've all been waiting for. Our very first show and tell. What I did on my summer vacation. Take seats quickly and quietly. There was a mad frenzy as friends tried to get seats together and Cato found himself way in the back with a tiny shy octopus. She was hiding in a pail. I'm Cato, he told the little octopus. She just reached out a few tentacles and stared. Finally, she whispered, I'm Olivia. Mr. Octavio pointed to one of the soccer players and said, you are first, young man. Swim right up here and tell us your name and what you did this summer. My name's Calvin, said the clownfish, and I was in a summer soccer league with those guys, and he pointed at his friends. As Calvin told everyone about all the fun they'd had together, Cato wondered if his summer had been so cool after all. All the other kids had friends already. Was he going to be the only one without friends? Cato started off bravely enough. He told the class all about cleaning the corals. And he heard one of the boys laughing in disbelief. Cleaning? This kid spent his summer cleaning? Oh, wow, that is so lame. Cato gulped, but took out his sea sponge to show them. Now all the boys were laughing. A sponge? He brought in a sponge? They snorted over and over. Each time one of them said the word sponge, all the others would start laughing again. Pretty soon, even the girls were laughing. Kato didn't even want to hand out the Caribbean saltwater taffy he brought in for everyone. The only one who didn't laugh was Olivia. She just stared at him. Mr. Octavio quieted the class, but Kato felt really small as he swam sadly back to his seat. Boy, what a Stupid fish I am, he thought. How could any normal kid think cleaning is cool? Don't feel bad, said Olivia quietly. They make fun of me too. Somehow, that didn't make him feel any better. When Cato got home, Mama was waiting at the door. Well, dear? She asked as she kissed him, how was your very first day at school? Oh, Mama, it was terrible. Why did you and Dad ever make me go to clean stupid corals in the stupid Caribbean with that stupid sponge? Why didn't you just send me to camp like all the other kids? I would have had friends. Now everyone hates me. They all think I'm stupid. Before Mama could say anything, Cato burst into tears, which isn't easy to see under the sea, and swam to his room. Mama didn't follow. Now was the time to let him be alone and hope that things would get better. They didn't. All the kids except Olivia made fun of him or ignored him. Mr. Octavio had wanted to help, but he knew that he would only make things worse. He kept his eyes on the boys, but it was impossible to watch them all the time. I may have eight tentacles, but I have only two eyes, he said to himself. <clears throat> he knew they were playing jokes on Cato. Cato didn't give up. He tried to play with the kids at recess, and he tried to swim home and hang out with them. Ah, go eat some algae, teased Cal. 
What's wrong with that? Cato wondered. <sighs> the teasing had gotten worse and worse until finally Mr. Octavio had had enough. This time he was really, really angry. The class was laughing out loud at Cato. Silence! He stormed. If I see a single fin flutter, a single mouth move, a single tail twitch, you will all stay after school. The class had never seen him this angry. If that stupid catfish would only leave them alone, they wouldn't have gotten into trouble. Stevie the squid stuck his tongue out as Kate, at Cato as soon as Mr. Octavio turned away. The rest of the class giggled. Mr. Octavio whirled around and saw the big red tongue. Ah, he sighed. All right, that's it. We stay after school today and clean the desks and my board. Why doesn't he make Cato do it? whispered one of the kids. He loves to clean. Mr. Octavio sighed again and wondered if they would ever learn to get along. He turned back to the math sums on the board. Let's get back to work. Who can solve this problem? If it takes two tuna to tune a guitar, how many tuna does it take to tune a harpfish? When the class was finally let out, it was too late to do anything fun. They gave Cato dirty looks and swam their separate ways. Cato swam more slowly than usual. Mama would ask how his day had been and he'd have to tell her it was terrible. The next few days were torture for the whole class. Mr. Octavio was still angry, and he watched them like a barracuda. They wouldn't stop tormenting Cato, so they had extra homework every day. The more they blamed Cato, the more they teased him. They put sponges in his school bag and rubber gloves on his desk and did whatever else they could to make him miserable. Life went on like this for too long. The class wouldn't forgive Cato for something he hadn't done, and Mr. Octavio wouldn't forgive them for all the things they had done. Resentment kept building until the tension was so great you could cut it with a swordfish. One afternoon, just before school was over, Mr. Octavio said, let's talk. He spoke about friendship, kindness, loyalty to classmates, all the stuff they thought was boring. They pouted their fish lips and stared silently. Mr. Octavio's lecture was interrupted by a deep thrumming sound that made the entire schoolroom vibrate. The anemones drew in their tentacles, the hermit crabs disappeared into their shells, and some of the younger octopi were so nervous they inked their desk. Quick, children, come here to me, called Mr. Octavio urgently. I will protect you. The vibrations became so strong, they shook the desks, and great masses of garbage rained down from the surface of the ocean. The vibrations now were so strong, some of the corals started to crack. What in the sea was happening? Swim! gasped Mr. Octavio as he pulled his fearful charges in his wake. Swim as fast as you can! They fled for their lives, dodging bottles and cans, old tires and oil drums, all the garbage and filth that those uncaring creatures called humans dumped in their lovely ocean. 
Some of the youngest fish sobbed. They're going to catch and eat us. Not if I can help it, thought Mr. Octavio grimly as he swam them to the relative safety of a nearby grotto that was outside the path of destruction. There he discharged his own ink to hide them from any possible human eyes. It was over as suddenly as it had begun. The awful thrumming sound receded and then was gone. Cautiously they emerged and waited. After a moment, Mr. Octavio said, let us return to the classroom. They swam back morosely and surveyed the considerable damage. There was filth everywhere where just a few moments before there had been beauty and safety. They all stared, frozen with the hopelessness that can come of human thoughtlessness. All that is except Cato. Well, he said, what are we waiting for? We've got a lot of work to do. He bustled around the desks, cleaning and polishing and setting things to right. The other fishes thought about leaving it all to him. They didn't want to do the dirty work. After all, he was the one who were cleaning with school. Mr. Octavio watched with a growing sense of frustration that even a shared catastrophe couldn't make them a team. He sighed when out of the corner of his eye, he saw a small tentacle slide over the rim of the pail where Olivia had been hiding since their return to the classroom. Cato swam over to her and they conferred quietly for a moment. Then he smiled and opened his desk. He took out the mop that the kids had put there to tease him. He thrust it into one of Olivia's tentacles and went back to work. They seemed so happy together that the other kids felt left out. And one by one, they joined in the cleaning. And soon their classroom was spotless. Well, maybe not spotless. It would take years for the damage to repair itself, if it ever could, but it was certainly livable again. This is all Cato's. Mr. Octavio held his breath for the inevitable blame, but it didn't come. He let out his breath as he heard, this is all Cato's doing. Way to go, Cato. All the fishes joined in the cheering. Cato blushed and his fins fluttered with happiness. He looked over at Olivia and they smiled at each other. Hey, Cato, called Stevie. Let's all hang out at my house after school today. And that's just what they did. Poor Cato. His classmates gave him a very hard time. Do you think he did anything to deserve it? That's right, Pippin. No one ever deserves to be bullied. You know, sometimes people do mean things to each other without thinking. And sometimes they're afraid to let someone new into their group and they hide being afraid by acting tough. Are there other reasons people become bullies? What do you think they are? Do you think people can change how they treat people? You know, how would you like to be treated if you were new to a group? You know, we're all the new kids sometime. Cato really did save the day, didn't he? He did something that helped the whole group. He didn't give up, and he gained everyone's respect and admiration. And when his classmates understood what Cato had known all along, they all worked together and were able to fix some, but not all of the mess that humans had made of their sea world.
Cato was brave in his own quiet way. And you must be too. Eventually, he got the friendship he wanted. All of us want that. There's a wonderful word, empathy. It means being able to understand or, or share someone else's feelings, even if you haven't been in the same situation. Being able to see things from someone else's point of view. Now, if we're all truly able to empathize with each other, that just might help us get rid of bullying. You know, maybe if we humans had some empathy for others, for humans, birds, animals, and fishes, we could have a nicer world. Perhaps we could learn from Cato and start to clean up our own mess. Maybe we could even stop messing up in the first place. Remember, we are all connected on this beautiful planet and we must learn to care for it. Do you think we can do that? Are you ready to try? Until next time, be kind, be well, stay safe. Bye.